Hey, it's Lucas. Got a shaper here I want you to see. It's an Atlas Model 7B. It's had a few knocks in its day, but actually everything's working really well on it right now. Uh, right now I got it set up. This is a piece of alloy steel. Yeah, it's in the vise here. It's the original vise. Uh, everything's wired up really good. It's the original motor. It's an Atlas motor. Uh, it's probably from the 50s. The guard's original, and uh, here's one of the uh, aspects of it where I say it's had a few knocks over its lifetime, but uh, this has been repaired, uh, it's been TIG welded, and then around the hinge on the other side, we'll see that in a little while. Uh, there are a few other little issues with it, but they've all been pretty much corrected. Here's, uh, here's another example. Uh, this is an original ball crank handle, but the, uh, the actual uh, uh, crank part had had been broken off so this has been repaired there's a screw through this ball so uh, that's one of the things that's uh, that's been fixed on it so we're gonna fire it up now uh, I'm gonna back this off just a touch because uh, I just kind of adjusted that but uh, here we're just taking a really uh, really nice substantial chip Let's see if we can uh, Drop it down just a little bit more. And uh, this, I'm going to go over some of the controls on the Atlas too. It's it's got one of the nicest uh, means of adjusting the stroke, uh, which is going to be right here. Uh, of any shaper I've looked at, it's really easy to do. Some of them you actually have to open up the uh, access panel of a Scotch yoke and then adjust a, a nut. But this one, it can actually uh, adjust it from right here. The stroke, the uh, position of the ramp can be adjusted right here on this. Uh, uh, square post. So uh, anyway, let's take a look at a cutting. You got a little, uh, a little. The, the section that's not cut is red, and we're uh, getting near the end here. But uh, that's the way the thing cuts, and that's the kind of finish you get. A very nice finish. Very quiet. Nice easy machine, it's kind of fun to watch them run. And this is uh, the 7, so it's got about a 7 inch uh, work envelope. So it'll take about a 7 inch stroke right now, we're at about 3 inches. But it'll take up to a 7 inch stroke and the uh, uh, the uh, movement of the, uh, of the box here is about 7 inches total. I do have one screw missing, it's on this, uh, it's on this wiper, I just need to get uh, a couple of screws in that. That'll all be corrected. So we're going to let her finish out here. Just about done. I'm going to shut it off. So that's the uh, that's the tool in operation. Uh, the other guard on the other side, we're going to show that here momentarily. Uh, the other guard is present. That's actually had no issues. Uh, I didn't see any breaks on it or cracks. Uh, the uh, machine will also come with a couple of wrenches, so this is the wrench for adjusting, oh, for running back the, uh, running this back, etc. So that's the way that uh, you run it back. Uh, flip it over. This is set up right now to cut uh, as the box moves that way. So the cutter is set up that way. The, uh, the feed is set up here. Uh, and, and you, you put the, uh, depending on which direction you want the cut to occur, either, you know, moving this way or moving that way. So right now, the box is going to move left. And there's actually an L and an R on the, uh, uh, on, well, let's see if we can, we better have that in view. There's an L and an R here on this, uh, uh, there, there's a dovetail uh, or a, a T-nut essentially in, in a slot here. And then, depending on which direction you want the ratchet to advance the table, and at what time, because you actually want it to advance while the, the cutter is going back, and to be stationary, not moving this way, when the cutting cutter head is going forward. So anyway, you adjust that by moving this, uh, this pin either to the one side or the other of the center point here on this, uh, on this actuator. So... Uh, and then uh, you also flip this over to change the direction of advance. The amount of advance is determined by how far away from center this pivot point is. So yeah, if you move this 
right now it's set so it, you can hear it was uh, it was clicking one ratchet per cycle and then that ends up being about five thousandths on the dial here you can read that off as it's functioning if you uh, you really can't go much less than that because if you do you won't get a full click of the uh, ratchet and therefore it won't advance so you actually have to have some advance on it and it's not infinitesimally small it's some finite amount so anyhow that's uh, that's the advance mechanism. The, uh, the, the, the motor is designed to turn, and actually it is a reversible motor, but it's designed to turn one way. And there's actually an arrow cast in this pulley that shows the motor has to be turning that way, which on this side then is, is clockwise. So this, this pulley has to be turning clockwise. Um, and, and that's important. It's important because the left and right enunciators on, the, uh, on this and uh, there's also a, a L and R on this. These, these depend on the motor turning a certain way. So the motor's set up properly on this one. Everything's good to go. Um, let's, uh, let's adjust it down a little bit and we'll, uh, we'll fire it up again here. I'm going to take about 20 thousandths. And uh, right now we are a ways away from the workpiece, so I'm just going to advance it a little bit. So it doesn't take quite so much time to get to the. I'm going to leave this on here so you can see this, how this turns, and uh, that is about yeah, it's about five thousandths per increment, and you can hear the click is going on as the ram is going that way, which is good because that means that the non-click portion is occurring when the ram is retracting. That means that the box is stationary and the cutters and the uh, advancing and it's actually moving uh, that way when the cutter is retracting, coming back. Something else that's important on these machines is this clapper box. So the clapper box is right here. And uh, you can't really hear it, but normally on the return stroke, it, it uh, lifts up a little ways so that the cutter uh, doesn't interfere with the uh, workpiece and that the movement of the box doesn't interfere with the cutter or break anything. So it does move and in fact it'll move more. Uh, you can hear it more when we have a, a larger increment on the uh, on the cut. So let's uh, let's do that now. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to move this over slightly so that we get maybe a, maybe a couple two three uh, ratchet advances as the uh, uh, cycle uh, is completed. So Gonna loosen this up. Move that over just a tad. Tighten her back down. And now instead of five thousandths, we can hear we're hitting at least two, and then we're at about eight thousandths per advance. Yeah, we still aren't really here in the clapper box. I'm gonna try this one more time. We'll adjust it even a little more, make it uh, really, uh, really go here. And sometimes you have to do have to do this, advance this a little bit in order to move this out the way you want to. Now we can actually see the clapper box moving. It's uh, maybe a little hard to see here on the video, but you watch right here, you can see that the uh, the, uh, the lantern tool post is actually lifting up on the return stroke. And now we've got, let's put the handle on here so you can see how much of an advance we've got. This is advancing about a little less than a quarter, maybe about a fifth of a uh, circle uh, for each revolution. So we're really taking a big, a big chip out of this. Now we're at uh, 20 thousandths depth, depth here and uh, Oh gosh, a fifth of a circle, it's got to be another 20 thousandths. So roughly 20 thousandths by 20 thousandths on that chip. And as you can see, it was cutting really nice. It was just giving these a, and actually leaving a very nice surface. Now, uh, you can tell where I increased the advance. So that would be the, uh, the uh, adjustment that was made with this wrench over on the other side. And uh, that gives a, a larger spacing between the strokes. 
and therefore a little rougher finish. Here's the original one where I was at about five thousandths. It's actually quite good, and then here it, it's still good, but it's it is rougher. And uh, the the cutting tool does have a radius on it. I want to say something about that too. The cutting tool uh, can be you can put a lathe tool holder in the lantern tool post, just like in a lathe, and put this tool in the tool holder. The problem that I've run across with that is it does uh, tend to chatter more. So actually get a really nice cut if you can, uh, especially uh, with this machine, I am sure that's true of any machine, you reduce the amount of overhang by taking that out, you reduce the number of degrees of freedom where the, uh, the tool might uh, Oh, might tend to have some movement in it, and uh, if you reduce that, tighten everything up, reduce the overhang so you don't have the uh, uh, the, the uh, slide uh, a long ways away from the, uh, the 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 base for the slide. If you do those things, it'll it'll tighten it up, and uh, you'll have no chatter. And this showed no chatter, so it's really working great. Okay, then again, okay, so we loosen this up, we turn this, tighten it up to lock it. And we're going to go here and adjust our, our stroke out again, lock that down, and now we're going to run this manually so we can make sure that this slide doesn't bump into the, uh, the wipers or, more importantly, this part of the casting because you will break it. Nothing's broken on this. It's just, okay, now instead of a 3-inch stroke, we're out about 5 inches, okay? So let's uh, let's do that one more time. See if we can get her uh, way out there. Okay, I'm gonna advance this a little more. Okay, now let's bring her back. Okay, can we see? It's gonna be hard to see with me in the way. Let's uh, let's do this this way. Okay, again, making sure that the uh, Ram doesn't, uh, this box doesn't collide with the ram. And, uh, there, now we're at about a, oh gosh, it's got to be close to the limit. That's probably a seven inch stroke right there. And that's how easy it is to adjust the 7B. Now, a lot of them you have to access the uh, interior, the scotch yoke itself. And uh, that's, uh, it's always dirty because they're, they're always a little greasy in there. Adjust it back. And again, run this out. And again, it's a good thing to hear the ratchet clicking when the ram is uh, advancing and not clicking when it's retreating because that means that uh, things are, are correct. Now, if we look here, we'll see that the tool is not quite clearing the uh, the uh, incoming side of the workpiece. So what we'll do here is just uh, bring this back a little bit. And again, we're well away from the uh, from the clapper box support. There. Now instead of a three-inch stroke, we probably have, which we started with, we probably have about a four-inch stroke. I'm going to leave it there. Let's talk about some other parts of the uh, of the system. Uh, uh, I want to show the Scotch yoke here in operation and uh, just how smooth that is everything's great on it and uh, we'll, let's flip it on we'll, uh, we'll do that first and the way this works too it's uh it's interesting the uh the ram actually advances slowly and it comes back quickly so it comes out slow and, and comes back a little more quickly that has to do with the position of the uh the driver in here on the slide on this vertical member as the uh, slide is advancing and that's another advantage to having the uh, the motor running one direction it gives you that uh, slow out which gives the maximum force at the cutting tool and fast return which helps save a little time uh, the farther away from the center pivot this uh, this point is in other words the longer the stroke the more noticeable that difference in speed would be between the outgoing slow and the return fast. So one other thing I wanted to mention is this. 
This is the uh, TIG welded. Uh, the hinge had broken out on this uh, guard at one time, and so this has all been TIG welded. It looks a little rough, but actually it's quite serviceable and uh, quite strong. All right, let's uh, let's look at this side of the tool. So uh, there are a couple of aspects to this that are important to note. One is the guard. The original guard is here. It's aluminum. It's an aluminum casting. It's in great shape. Uh, this is the access point to the scotch yoke. And ordinarily, you don't have to go into this except to lubricate it. It's well lubed. It's got uh, it's got a lot of grease, which uh, is in, actually it's not dried out or anything. So. Everything is good in there. The uh, there is a point where you oil it. It's right here. And there's another. You know, there's a few other lubrication points on the on the system. There's one on top there. There's some others on the other side. And then there's a grease lubricating system right here, which actually lubes up the one of the main bearings. There's one on the other side for the the same thing. Okay, so that's the uh, Scotch yoke side. Uh, point out that uh, it's got the original motor. It's an Atlas motor, and boy, it really works great. It's nice and quiet. That's the original Atlas motor. It's got the Atlas badge on it. And the capacitor motor single phase. The box looks great. There's really no, no issues with the box. Uh, the shims have been uh, adjusted so it moves, but it's not sloppy. It's got a foot, which is a good thing. That was an a improvement in the 7B over the original Model 7 Atlas Shaper. Uh, it's got the foot, and I want to adjust that from the front. Uh, the vise is, as I mentioned, original. The vise has just a tiny little bit of uh, uh, of a gouge right here. But really, nothing that's uh, going to cause an issue. There are no breaks, no breaks in any of the castings. And it's all been stripped. I want to point that out, too. It's, uh, it's stripped. There's no paint uh, on it, but there is a coat of lacquer on it. And uh, the idea here was uh, a restoration. So uh, it's been uh, restored, but still looks like an old tool, which I think is kind of fun. Uh, everything on the, uh, there's, there's a motor uh, clutch brake assembly, though I'm skeptical about the effectiveness of the brake. The belt is so new, I put a new belt here. The belt is so new that even when that is relaxed, the belt still pr transmits power from one pulley to the other. I think as the belt ages, stretches, glazes, and gets more flexible, that perhaps the the uh, clutch mechanism will work better. But right now, I wouldn't rely on the clutch. I would stay close to the on-off switch when operating this. Um, the top, okay, so the original top is actually down here. So now the shelf. Uh, that was saturated with oil, and it was difficult to clean. So I, I just replaced the top, and actually this is quite a bit thicker than the standard top. It's probably oh, maybe three-eighths of an inch thicker than the original, which adds a little stiffness to the system. And the wood actually is part of the uh, system that supports the foot of the box out here. So uh, that's a good thing. The uh, legs are original. They're the Atlas legs. They're uh, cast iron. They're uh, tremendously strong, and uh, they're bolted up. There are two separate legs and they're bolted. They're actually carried by this block as well, this top. Uh, the uh, bottom plate acts as a stretcher and uh, that bottom shelf should not be used in any uh, in any case to try to lift the machine. Uh, there's only a couple of light screws that hold the top, uh, that shelf down onto the leg supports. Okay, uh, I think that's about it. It's, uh, it's in great shape. This is a really nice old shaper. And uh, like I said, everything's been stripped, so you can see if there are any breaks, but uh, there are none. Uh, every every break that was on it has been fixed, and the only breaks that were on it were on the, this guard and uh, a couple of other things, like I mentioned this. There's another little uh, ratchet. Uh, the, the ratchet mechanism had a little repair to it as well. But everything's working on it. I think it's as strong, if not stronger, than it was when it was new. Okay. Hey, this is Lucas, signing off.